as wildlife gets overtaken by sprawl and development, they recognize the areas that they're relatively safe in, and that could be anything from a city park uh, to a preserved area to a golf course. Uh, to a canal, to an alleyway. That allows them to move amongst all this development, this construction that they're not used to. As developments come into an area, you're going to have obviously a loss of habitat. You're going to end up potentially fragmenting the habitat with whether it's a golf course uh, or a road uh, that the animals are used to traveling on. In this environmentally aware age, a lot of times they're allowing for that movement through neighborhoods by leaving travel corridors, whether it's a, a drainage or a wash that's untouched or even enhanced. People need to evaluate what their tolerance level is going to be with wildlife because if they feel that they're not that tolerant of wildlife and they move into an area that has incorporated this habitat and wildlife in their plans, they might need to think about where else they might be able to uh, look at living because the wildlife that is there, you know, is a fact and they're not going to be removed because it makes an individual uncomfortable because the rest of the neighborhood is going to be very supportive of having that wildlife around. The coyotes come by here every day. They have sort of a sense about people being around here. They don't let you get too close, but they seem to know that um, it's comfortable for them and safe for them to be here. Your first impression when you look at a coyote is that it's a, it's a dog. It sort of looks like a dog with a big bushy tail. They're not like dogs. They're wild animals. If you try, even in, a, in an urban setting like we are, you can coexist with these animals and, and uh, respect each other's rights and property. And, and the coyotes seem to think that whatever's in the fence is ours and whatever outside is fair game. That's why we sort of keep the kitten uh, on a leash. This is Gussie. Rescued him from a trunk of an abandoned car when he was four weeks old. And we've kept him <laughs> around here. And he loves to sit out here and watch the animals with us. What is that? All those birds and yeah. yow. We try very hard to take care of our domestic pets and at the same time um, make sure that we're trying to take care of the, the wild animal environment to keep them here. The coyotes are just a, it's a different kind of animal. It's very interesting. Each one of them has a personality. There are four of them that sort of hang out here. These two females, it's very, very difficult for me to tell these two apart. Of course, Scuzzy has his eye on both of them. Just loves to <laughs> watch the coyotes do. There's another female. The third one has always been a loner. The fourth one is a male. And uh, we have named him Wiley. We just call him Wiley Coyote. And uh, we talk to him all the time when he's out here. He doesn't seem to mind us talking at him and talking to him. Uh, these animals were here first before the houses came, and now that we have such development going on in the area, I'm sure we've taken up a lot of their, their territory. Uh, I just think that they belong here. And uh, to see somebody run them off or take them away or kill them or poison them or what some other things I've heard people do to the coyotes, is, I don't think that's right. We think they like to hang out here because it's quiet. It's sort of a dead-end street. The, the wash makes a, a sharp turn not too far from here and uh, goes for some miles down the canal. So they have a good range of freedom to, to move about without walls and fences. I, I have some serious concerns. As these new houses are being built, the first thing they usually do is build these huge walls around them. And you're just basically taking away the territory from the animals to range and, and to hunt. One of the reasons we selected this particular property because it was open and it encouraged the wildlife. I've always been a, an outdoorsman and a conservation-minded person, so f for me and, and my family, we really enjoy watching the animals. But uh, today we have the coyotes, and about every week or 10 days we have some javelinas that come through. And to be in the city and see this is, is just wonderful. The role golf courses usually play with wildlife and human interactions, they will allow animals to move pretty freely within the area that the golf course takes up as it meanders through uh, neighborhoods. Oh, nice. For a number of years now, they've had resident coyotes living on the golf course. I think it's strange that they will be that close to people, but you know, when they get used to it, they don't seem to mind the people but they do to keep uh, a certain distance. I've been out here on the uh, golf course for about 11 years and I think they're great. 
It's kind of fun to see them out there sunning and running around in the pack. I get a kick out of it. I think overall the general feeling is that uh, most of the residents and the golfers actually enjoy having the coyotes out here. I, w I wouldn't give them up for anything. Oh, great. That's good to hear. And once in a while you see them playing with a ride, like tug, uh, tug of war, you know. Some folks have said that they've watched coyotes chase golf balls. I kind of like to watch them, but I like to be uh, from a distance. Golf courses just have perfect prey species available. Well, there's no fences, it's wide open. There's plenty of rabbit seed, I guess. Prey species can range anything from rabbits to quail, smaller animals along those lines. I enjoy seeing the little rabbits too, but uh, some people say that's the way of evening up things. There's so many rabbits. If they don't uh, go after the rabbits, we have overabundant of rabbits. We do have small cats and dogs that occupy some of these areas, so we have to look out for that also. I've heard several people who have say they lost their cat or something. For the most part, coyotes are not a dangerous animal to have around. They are occupying our neighborhoods, our golf courses, maybe even some of our parks. I think people just need to be aware of the coyotes, maybe even learn a little bit more about them. And the folks that don't like having them around, I think the biggest reason is because they're concerned for their small pets. And I think if folks just uh, are a little bit more aware, I think we can kind of remedy that concern. What people need to remember is the interaction between human and wildlife, the human is going to be the dominant player. You are going to be close enough to that animal to play the dominant role in thwarting any kind of uh, attack by a coyote uh, or a javelina. From the coyote standpoint, the coyote is focusing on that small dog and you need to let that coyote know you're the dominant player, uh, making noise and, and keeping it at its distance. The issue with javelina is certainly not an aggressive one toward the human as much as it is toward the dog. When they see a dog, they don't see a poodle or German shepherd, they see coyote form. And the coyote is their main predator. So they are going to be very defensive and can be quite effective at trying to keep an animal uh, at bay. I've got three darts made. I was sitting on my couch this morning and the guy across the street, I know I know he don't have any animals because he hates all our cats. And um, I thought, my God, it, he's got a dog. And so I just looked and there was like three more and I saw him with his hose and he's like spraying them. And I thought, are those chows? So I go outside and I ask the guy, I go, what are those? And he goes, they're javelinas. He was scared to death. We're not going to put much in there. No, no. They were like eating all of our flowers. One's laying down. I have like three petals on one rose bush left. She had taken out her trash and they came in the, her backyard and I said, shut it, that way we can call somebody <laughs> to come and get them. Since I didn't want to touch them, I kind of left them there. <laughs> they just ate on some grass a little bit and then they just been sleeping underneath the trampoline. I thought they were awful. I'm like, ooh, but then I didn't want them to get hit by a car, so that's why I left them here because I thought they'd be safer here. Someone's gonna come around the back side of this truck here. Anytime we handle them, that's a the last resort. It's best for the animals to get them out of that situation to prevent them from being possibly hit by cars and uh, being harassed uh, within the city limits. And it gets them back out and foraging on uh, native vegetation and the things that they need to feed on rather than bird seed in the valley and, and petunias and things of that nature. We're building so much and their land's being taken away, so they probably are just mixed up on what to do. Just uh, behind me here, I've got uh, Cave Creek Wash. There are regulations against uh, uh, developing washes because they're, they're used for uh, runoff and things of that nature. So they utilize those, these washes as travel corridors. These have tried to get back into the wash corridor and to try to get back into the desert area and just weren't able to find their way back. They haven't like chased anybody or I haven't seen them chase any of the animals either. Kyle, do you want to go around and get up on that fence? No, I think I've got a shot. They're going to run, they're going to disperse, probably take off and make quite a bit of racket. And that's why we're going to need everybody to stay back. Just leave them out. Okay, so we just got the one left. Okay. Is he out? And we'll ear tag them. Aww. We'll assess their health. Good job, Dr. Welby. And then once we do that, we'll go ahead and make a log a record of them. Well, I feel sorry for them. I mean, they were so peaceful back there. We'll make sure that we do these animals all three together, maintain the herd unit that they have, and we'll release those animals all at the same time so that they can maintain the integrity of their herd unit and increase their chance of survival. 
maybe they'll find their moms. No, <laughs> you know, find their families, get back with a group of them. We released some other javelina in this area within the last couple months, and most of them have been females. And the three that we've put in today are all, all males. And we're hoping these animals will end up finding each other and developing a good cohesive herd unit and doing well. When a problem does arise, the human can uh, use any reasonable means, which means legal means, to resolve that problem. And that could be to hire someone to come out and take care of it, or to try to do it themselves. But uh, generally, the Game and Fish Department does not get involved unless there is immediate and imminent human safety involved, or if the animal is contained in a situation it can't get out of on its own. Make sure that these animals don't get too comfortable in neighborhoods. Uh, that's when the problems start to arise. Don't feed the large mammals, the javelina or coyote. They, they do fine without the food. Um, they become desensitized to humans. Uh, they approach humans. They associate food with humans, and that's a problem waiting to happen. And I think the other thing we need to keep in mind is that people may be unintentionally feeding wildlife. They leave out cat food or dog food for their pets, and the next thing we know is we've got wildlife coming in and feeding. By scaring the animals off, letting them know you're there, whether it's spraying with the hose if you're close enough, uh, shouting and making noise and clanging pans. Just any time they come into an area, uh, don't let them relax, and then they'll figure, well, doggone it, every time I go into that area, uh, I can't even take a relaxed breath. I'm going to stay out of there. We uh, advocate planting native vegetation. They're desert adapted from a wildlife standpoint. It's more normal for them to come into and they have just as much of that kind of vegetation out in the more open areas and, and have less chance of coming into conflict. When you talk about putting in citrus plants or fruit or even uh, nut trees or something, uh, these animals don't see that out in the desert and so that's an attractant to those animals. It's like setting up an ice cream parlor on the corner. We do have a lot of people that have mixed feelings about having wildlife in their area, on their golf courses, in their neighborhoods. And we just try to let them know that the wildlife are here. We typically don't do any kind of mass removal. Because we are not going to win, nor are we even going to fight the battle of removing wildlife from an area. People need to recognize that if they love having animals around, they might have a neighbor that's not quite as tolerant. So as the department, we deal with that array and we're trying to keep a, a nice middle ground to have wildlife around, to teach humans uh, about wildlife so that they're a little more comfortable with it because more often than not, it's just a matter of people not being familiar with that wildlife in an area. And once they find out the regular behavior patterns, the, the lack of human threat, they become much more tolerant uh, of some of the inconveniences that might arise.